US is sending 31 M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine, which is enough for one Ukrainian tank battalion, three companies, each with 10 tanks, and then one extra tank at the battalion HQ. But that's just one battalion. For comparison, Russia invaded Ukraine with over 100 battalion tactical groups. Obviously, not all were strictly tank battalions, but it made me wonder, how many tanks could the US even afford to give? I've looked into Russian tank storage sites, but how about the US? It turns out that even with losing nearly 2,000 tanks, Russia still has significantly more tanks than the US. And the US number continues to drop. First, real fast, our sponsor, YouGov. With the economy the way it is, we could probably all use a little extra cash these days. One thing I've done now for over a decade is make 3D models and sell them online, and also often use those models to animate a clip for my videos. In fact, I have this one rendering right now as I'm making this. They can take a long time to render though, just waiting around. So for me, it's a perfect place to make some extra money by doing surveys on YouGov. It's a great side hustle. And for me, I guess a side hustle for my side hustle. It's free to join and easy to start making some cash. And as a member, you'll earn points for giving your actual opinions on matters that can make a difference by completing short surveys and polls. And they're real quick and easy to do. This one took less than 30 seconds. So go over and give it a try for yourself. Click my link in the description and take surveys to earn cash on YouGov. And again, just to be clear, this is extra tanks in storage that can be used to replace losses in a war, not actual active tanks in units. The US has over 2,000 of those. The US keeps nearly all their stored tanks at one facility, Sierra Army Depot. As of March, there was 1,711 good tanks there, then another 97 bad ones. These ones were missing turrets, and mostly just the hull remaining. I also bought satellite imagery from a wide range of dates. February 2022, April, August, October, November, December, February 2023, and March. Now I didn't count each one, but in April 2022, there was 2,036 good tanks, and it's been dropping ever since. In February 2023, almost 300 less, down to 1,741. Now the US promised to send Abrams tanks to Ukraine. Originally, they were going to be brand new built from the ground up, but that would have taken at least a year. In March, they decided to change their plans. Instead, they were going to refurbish existing tanks, and they would be able to have them ready in half the time. Now again, it was announced that 31 tanks would be sent. So I found and bought a satellite image for March, and interestingly, there was 30 less tanks than before, in February. I counted multiple times, but I could have missed one, but it's possible that these tanks are the ones being removed, to be refurbished, to be sent to Ukraine but also probably more likely just a coincidence. After all, again, the number of tanks at Sierra has been declining. The US also stores some tanks at Anniston Army Depot. Not as many, and Anniston does a lot more maintenance and conversions, but I found some 488, with another 204 stripped down hulls. Now again, just like when I did the Russian tanks and storage videos, it's impossible to know for sure the condition. Unlike Russia though, they are constantly being moved around, which likely indicates that they're in better shape. So, in total, the US has 2,199 good tanks in storage. And then if you count the 301 hulls, it puts it to a total of exactly 2,500. Now again, for comparison if you didn't see the video, as of February this year, Russia had around 3,911 good tanks in storage, and 6,341 if you include the bad tanks. But that number of US tanks is around 30% less than you'll typically see posted online. Now, before saying those people are just wrong, there's a few reasons I could explain it. One is that the US is constantly taking old M1s and M1A1s from storage and upgrading them to the latest M1A2s. This year, there were 90 in the budget to be upgraded. And for the most part, this is all the US, as well as Russia, does. They both still have so many extra tanks left over from the Cold War that they really don't need to build brand new tanks from scratch. Nearly all the tanks that you hear Russia or the US producing are really just taking old ones and upgrading them. In the US, typically, when another country wants to buy Abrams tanks, they'll then go produce completely new ones as they don't want to deplete their stocks in case of an emergency. Along the same lines is that many Abrams tanks are being converted into other vehicles. There are another roughly 600 vehicles at Anniston that uses the Abrams chassis, things like the M1150 and the 1074 that are assembled there. And this explains why there are so many just hauls of tanks there. So different ways of counting them can give you different numbers. But also the US does something that nobody else does. They keep stocks of vehicles, equipment, and supplies in storage sites around the world. It's called PWRM, Prepositioned War Reserve Material. In 1961, the Soviet Union suddenly demanded the withdrawal of all military forces from Berlin. The situation quickly escalated, and the US realized that they had no real ability to rapidly reinforce Europe if a war suddenly broke out. 
It would take weeks or even months to ready and ship over all the equipment and gear needed for a fight. So they began storing all the equipment that their units would need in warehouses in Europe. That way, all they had to do was send over the soldiers and the manpower that can just grab the equipment from storage and use them to fight until reinforcements could arrive. Today, the US has several of those sites. They hold things like complete sets of vehicles and all the gear for brigade combat teams, along with maintenance facilities to keep them working. So if you included all the tanks at these sites, then that number would be a lot closer to what you see published in things like the military balance. But none of that answers the question why there's been a decrease of 300 tanks in the last year. Now again, the US had a huge surplus of tanks left over from the Cold War, so there's been no real need to build brand new ones. But more than 30 years have passed since. Some of those tanks are now past the point of saving, some might have been lost or totaled in accidents, and so on. For a while now, the US has been trying to develop a replacement for the Abrams, so new Abrams halls were not built. But those programs, like the XM-1202, ended up being cancelled for budgetary and technical reasons. Now don't get me wrong, they still have plenty of tanks for their own needs, but when it comes to quickly supplying countries like Ukraine with them, who don't have the time to sit around and wait to build new ones from scratch, they're starting to dip into the reserves. Now the US could probably give Ukraine around 100 or 200 before the drawdown interferes with war reserve requirements and the advanced procurement programs they have set up. But that's all ignoring all the training and logistics for more serious maintenance and repairs that would go along with sending that many to Ukraine. It's possible though that in the future a lot more than 31 will be sent. Maybe this smaller amount is just to make sure that sending these tanks is actually successful and more useful than any alternatives, such as sending more Bradleys or other equipment. Anyway, that's it. After looking into Russia's tank inventory, I thought it would be fun to get some insight into the US tanks. And if you stayed through the video to this point, I'm sorry for the long delay in videos. I've had some personal stuff going on and I needed to take a break for a little bit. But I really, really appreciate you guys watching and leaving comments. I don't get to respond to all of them, but I read a lot of them. And honestly, it really means the world to me. So sincerely, thank you so much.